Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the MLG Winter Championships, where we are down to match point between Evil Geniuses, Huck, and Star Tails parting. In the northeast corner as the Red Protoss looking to, you know, in his interview he said, I won't settle for anything but first place. Can he get past that match and make that dream come true? Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for EG's Huck. Down in bottom left, as we saw in that Nas performance replay review, Parting managed to get the incredible defense purely through his own skill. If you'd like him to advance, give yourself a cheer for Star Tails Parting. This is one of those moments, Sean, where, you know, the guessing game really has to take a back seat because in a quote unquote best of one, where the winner advances and the loser goes home. You simply don't want to make any sort of a blind call and or a mistake as a result of not really reading it right. So, um, of course, the map in Tomb Valley, you know, let's talk a little bit about it, what we might expect out of these players and just how crucial this game actually is. Now, of all the maps I've watched Huck play on, the variety he displays on a Tomb Valley is the largest. He has been seen doing two gate uh, openings, then transitioning into an expand with some sentries. We've seen him go for the DT play that we saw in the last game. I would say maybe the only opening that we've seen Huck not do is Phoenix's on this map. But still, Huck, much more of a blink player, much more of an aggressive map control player. Would not be surprised, honestly, to see him just revert back to somewhat of a calm blink play and a faster sure. second base. All right, well, uh, we'll be keeping an eye on it as gas is completing up on both sides of the map. Huck now, um, you know, actually going back to Parting. Parting uh, even said beforehand that, you know, one thing is, is that uh, he was talking to Huck in the game and he said, Huck, you have a lot of fans, you know, like I, I hope the one day be as awesome as you. And Huck was saying, hey, you've got the code S skill, man. Like, you know, don't show yourself short. So one thing that we often see in the global StarCraft II competition is that you've got to have a breakout tournament in order to really be put uh, uh, amongst the list of the elite here who are playing the game. And Parting's looking for that. He's a young guy, you know, similar to Lenok. He's got a lot of game years ahead of him. And, uh, you know, I, as much as I love Huck, like, Parting, I think, is absolutely capable of not only defeating him, but taking it even further in this competition. Huck in the exact same boat. You know, I got to start asking myself, what is the opening Huck is doing? I mean, honestly, if you look down in Parting's base, this is the more normal look where that assimilator is just now wrapping up and Stalkers 2 and 3 are going to start concurrently. But meanwhile, in Huck's base, that geyser in the top has been down for a while. I. I wonder if Huck's starting to accumulate enough gas to do the same DT play again. I think, honestly, no matter what we may have said in that replay review, Huck might be thinking, damn it, I had that game. That was my game to lose. Not going to make that mistake this game. Going to do the same play this time, but better. As we see EG's Huck in the back of his base, there I mean, it is. When you're, uh, and yeah, you're right, uh, as the Twilight Cancel going down, but when you're doing this, I mean, how much of a concern is it that the one ramp is your only entrance into the base and effectively uh, a sentry can hold that off for, for so long? Do you have to kind of remove that from the equation of what could happen or? Well, interestingly, the ramp at the front combined with the ramp for the natural means that players like Parting are more likely to go sentry plays, to take faster bases, to do something that would let them force field their way into a defense. This means that Ichi's Huck knows that that breakdown potential, the ability to do some kind of Archon play, is going to be all the more strong. We see Huck poking around, and no, will be no DT play, will be nothing cheesy or goofy. He is going straight Blink Stalker, his core bread and butter. Yeah, there already is a forward pylon up here for Parting, warping in his original, uh, or two new stalkers here. Uh, going to meet up with Huck over here. Do get the first shot, but quickly bring all of his reinforcements back. He realized that he could be up against some aggression. There is two gateways on both sides with the robotics facility going up. Uh -oh. This will be very, very important. Blink will probably not be um, a variable here in this initial battle. Looks like Huck, oh, throwing down the sentry. Looks like he was worried that there was a big gateway push coming. He did see those gateways coming from the side. But look at this, Marcus. We see Huck, no matter what position he's in, no matter who he's against, he always finds a way to oh, point down a pylon. Oh, oh, oh my oh, gosh. Oh, oh, oh my oh, gosh. Oh, 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 oh
I'm almost positive he didn't see it, and it oh, instantly and there a warp it is, in. The warp in in the main base. Oh, parting a real shocker in this uh, particular moment. There, the sentries are now doing the pullback. We see two more gateways finishing up for EG's Huck. It looks like he is about to have an open field season with warp ins in the main base. Yeah, he is. He also got all those probes to move back, and now he's forcing them to get off of mining time even longer. The forces from Huck are moving across the map. Parting, getting rid of that pylon on the other side. Might even be able to cancel this warp in of oh. two stalkers and he does. The Zealots are eventually going to go down, but at the cost of some force fields as well, and many, many seconds of unmined time, or in no mining time here for his uh, for his probes. He's having to put them back on gas. He's put nothing back on the second. Here we have oh, an attack oh, oh. at the front. EG's Huck pokes forward, pops right back. He wants to try to target fire that Nexus in the unit counting station. It looks like Huck actually canceled gateway number four and realized he needed to do some big pressure fast. And there's the Dark Shrine yeah. going down again. This is not him trying to hope that there's not going to be an observer. This is him saying sentries are going to be Parting's key to defending, and I'm going to break that front door down with an Archon. Yeah, and Parting does get his expansion up already mining from it. The Nexus for Huck is under uh, construction right now as we have Huck moving across the oh, field. Oh, wait. Now. Oh, Huck with a... Wait, what? Did he cancel the Nexus? Really? Oh, he did. My God, I think Huck... Maybe he's just, just going to go with the Archons and go for it. I think he may very well go all in. I mean, Parting, he saw that there were Blink Stalkers out. He's going to be committing to Immortals. Yeah. And we have a small group actually moving across the map to see if they can find anything out and about uh, that's uh, just searching or just scouting. And he's just holding on to the middle. The Observer is oh going to make its way out God, here. God, my heart is beating so fast, Marcus. I mean, the DTs now can warp in at the south side. What is going to be the choice? It is decision time for EG's Huck. He has those down. Where's the Observer? The Observer's making its observers way across the map. Mid. There's another observers one coming out. No! Two Archons. Two Archons incoming for EG Huck. A blink back. And this, it's all going to come down to this moment. The force for Huck, enormous. Okay. Will Parting have the defense he needs? He's moving forward. And there's two force fields to block uh -oh. on the front. Uh -oh. Is he going to block it from there's the other side? There's a knockdown. And it looks like those Immortals are taking some serious hits. Huck, what will he warp in now? It looks like the Zealot numbers are still quite large. More Zealots warping in for Huck. The Immortals doing a lot of damage. But oh my goodness, DJ Wit, evil geniuses. Huck, the last standing foreigner, has broken the front of parting the expansion. Oh, GG! GG! Huck has done it. He has overcome Naniwa. He has now overcome Star Tails parting. He is up against a Terran. He is in the final four. A repeat is possible. Unbelievable, all the little things that Huck did in that matchup. The pylon to warp into the main, pulling the probes off as a result of two zealots being warped in, and then ultimately knowing now's the time to push, making two Archons. That's right, give it up for EG's Huck. Huck playing amazingly, and there is the team evil geniuses, Sir Scoots and the manager Evoli giving Huck their support throughout the tournament. Now we do know that Hart and Ganji are currently tied one and one. Ooh. The winner of that goes on to face E.G. Huck. So we're gonna have another matchup coming up here soon. After that, of course, we've got Dom Rangu sitting, waiting for the winner of that matchup as Huck moves on. DRG wow. is either going to face Huck or the winner, uh, uh, or it's gonna be Hart or Gonzi. And then, of course, Marine King kicking back. The final saying, boss. Saying, deal with it, as he is in the championship, or the winner, yep. grand final. And of course, we have to note, in the new format, it used to be best of three in the finals with a best of seven in case of an extended series. In this MLG, it is best of five with a best of nine in the case of extended series. If Dong Riku manages to get back to the finals, we'll be here a while. Not, not usually an issue. I mean, not, watching not something StarCraft, I'm not so about. bad, you know? Say that you've got to wait in the doctor's office for seven hours, not great. Wow, I would hate to have a best of nine with a doctor. <laughs> so it looks like Gonzi and Hart are still in that match. It's an epic TVT. So ladies and gents, don't go anywhere. Please stay around. And I hope you're enjoying yourself here at the MLG Winter Championship. I'm Day9. And I'm DJ Wheat. We're going to wait for the results from Hart and Gonzi. And then immediately following that, Huck faces the winner.
The MLG Winter Championship concludes today with a prize of $25,000 for first. Stick around, we'll be right back.